Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. Thank you, first of all, very quickly, so much for my new subscribers. Uh, I have now reached 500, so I will be doing a celebration of that very soon and I will also have a community tab very soon, which is very exciting for me. So thank you so much for everyone, every single one of those 500 subscribers. I really, really appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you for helping me at this uh, milestone. But today I want to talk about writers' CVs. This is the writerly video I've been teasing for a while. And I wanted to talk about writers' CVs because a few years ago, I had to come up with my own writer's CV for something I was applying for. And when I was trying to find information online and trying to get a good comprehensive list or article or video or anything, on what a writer's CV was, what I should and shouldn't do. I couldn't really find anything, so I thought that this would be a good resource for writers and a way for me to pass on some knowledge that I have learned through my own mistakes and whatnot, and also by talking to other more established and published writers as well. So I'm going to ask and answer a few questions in this video, mainly being what is a writer's CV and what isn't, what to include in a writer's CV, what not to include in a writer's CV, and what to do when you feel like you don't have anything that could possibly be relevant to to put in a writer's CV. And I'm going to answer all of those questions in this video. So first question is, what is a writer's CV? That may seem like a very simplistic question, but when I first heard of it, I didn't really know what it was. I thought that it was just like a list of publications and because I'd never published anything before I thought there's no way I could have one but that is not the case. So a writer's CV is very similar to an ordinary day job CV except you just include things that are relevant to your writing career and that can be all kinds of different things including publications but not limited to those publications. So for one of the what a writing CV is not, it's not there to include your everyday jobs that aren't related to what you're writing about. So what is a writer's CV and why do you need one and when will you be asked for one? So a writer's CV is just a very shorthand way for publishers or anyone in charge of long listing or short listing for different applications or grants to see what kind of a writer you are, uh, what kind of things you're involved in and that you are actually dedicated to the craft and you're not one of those people who says, hey I want to write a book but I couldn't be bothered reading any and those people do weirdly exist. So. That's what it is and when you'd be asked for one would be if you're applying for grants, uh, there's in Ireland there's uh, an arts council and there's different arts councils around uh, pretty much in every county in Ireland and they offer all kinds of things for writers retreats or bursaries or funding for different projects, not just writing but visual arts and all kinds of things. So if you were applying for something from them or to be a part of something, they would ask you what you were working on and they would ask for your writer's CV or your artist's CV to see what you've done in the past and basically get an idea of what kind of a person you are. And it's not just about what you have achieved, uh, it is also uh, about what you're capable of achieving and what I mean by that is just showing that you are dedicated to writing, that you're actually interested in it, that you have a passion for it and you are doing what you can in your circumstances to bring your career in writing forward. Obviously there are people who can pay for certain things, pay for masters or PhDs in creative writing and the people who can't but you can still volunteer at things or possibly start up things by yourself and these all accumulate into building up your sort of outline as a writer and what kind of a writer you will be. And it can also be a part of a book submission or a book query to a publisher or an agent 
they can sometimes ask for a writer's CV or it can be included just in a short paragraph in your query letter to say that you studied this, you've published this, you've won this and you're involved in this group or whatever and it can be really uh, helpful to know what to put in those query letters and to pick out the, the most important and most relevant things for what you're querying, querying in particular. Now whether you're writing fiction or non-fiction you may be tempted to add in things from your non-writerly life that you may think are relevant if you're writing a fiction book about a character who has worked in a hotel for their entire life you may feel like you want to add in that you've been working in a hotel for many years but it isn't really that relevant in at this point in time so you want to stick to just writerly things and of course this would be the most obvious things that not everyone will have but if you have them it's useful to use them so this would be formal education publications and any achievements or awards that you have so for example for myself uh, I did I do have a degree in English so that's right in there even though it didn't help me <laughs> whatsoever For publications, I do have a short story published in this anthology here, so I definitely include that. Any awards or achievements would be, would include anything uh, even from college days or school days if you ha got a commendation for an essay that you wrote or won a poetry competition, anything like that. Even if you were long listed, it's still important to put it in there because even though you feel like I, I didn't win that thing, I didn't actually get published in that or I didn't get to the final stages of that competition, just the fact that you even had something written in order to submit to that shows that you are dedicated to your craft, you are a writer, you're not just calling yourself a writer, you are actually writing and you're actually putting yourself out there and getting involved in the writing community and these are all great points to include. So outside of formal education like degrees or masters or PhDs or anything like that and outside of publishing novels or short stories or even getting short story collections published or anything or poetry and outside of winning writing competitions and stuff, what should you include? And there is quite a broad spectrum. It's pretty much anything that, again, shows you are committed to writing. Uh, one thing that I was sort of surprised uh, that I could include, but it was a published author, Fiona, who uh, told me that I should uh, include this in. A few years ago, I went to a writer's retreat. It was a, a weekend gothic writing retreat and I assumed that because that was something that I paid for myself, I actually paid to go and stay there, I assumed that that didn't really count because it wasn't like an achievement. I didn't get picked to go on this retreat or anything. However, she pointed out to me that it, the fact that I was paying a, a significant chunk of money to go to a retreat in another country and to stay there for an entire weekend and immerse myself in this this writing world and with these other writers and get feedback and stuff like that. It's a good way of showing that you are dedicated, like I, I keep saying. It's a good way of showing that you are interested in writing and you're willing to do whatever you can in your circumstances in order to do that. Of course there are things you can pay for, like Outside of formal education, there's creative writing courses. Uh, if you are in Ireland, the Irish Writers' Centre is a fantastic resource for bo both paid and uh, paid writing courses. And also there's free events and seminars and loads of different things you can find on their website. And even if you're not in Ireland, they are starting to do online ones now as well, so you can definitely pick up on some of those resources. But there are a whole host of free things that you can also do. And that would be things like applying for funding and bursaries, 
showing that you're putting your name in there and who knows this is something I will say to all writers or all anyone just apply even if you don't think you qualify apply you have no idea what happens behind the scenes you don't know who they're going to pick obviously try and take as many boxes as you can but I always think in my head what if no one else applied and they had to pick me and then you just make the best of it that you can so things that I've applied for were the the young writer delegates program that I did for the Irish Writers Centre and that was free for me and I got to go to Galway and stay with other young writers and be a part of the Courch International Book Festival which was incredible so that's in my CV also uh, something that I've done and something that I've noticed uh, I recently read Atomic Habits and the author of that book which is a non-fiction book which if you're a fiction writer you might think how does one prove that you can deliver a book uh, on non-fiction and one way that he mentioned in his book is that for years before he wrote that book just because he was interested in habits and interested in achieving his own goals he had a newsletter and a blog where he would write articles about different ways to create better habits and to lose bad ones and so he had this whole backlog this portfolio of information and stuff that he had dedicated himself to in order to prove to them that hey I know what I'm talking about on this subject and also I I've written all these things about the subject as well so you can see that I am a writer in this sphere and so it's important to show that and so that was a way for him to prove that he could actually write that and for me uh, I realized back when I first tried to make a writing CV I realized I didn't have anything other than my my degree in English to prove that I was interested in reading and writing and it is also very important by the way to make sure that you are reading contemporary uh, authors in your genre or in your section of the bookshop. They That's a question that they often include in query letters. Uh, is what are you reading right now because it is important to know what the trends and styles are and what uh, readers are sort of expecting from books in your genre at the moment and it also helps to show that you are supportive of other writers and supportive of the genre and books as a whole. So for me I started a blog reviewing horror books, I also started my Instagram reviewing horror books I also started my YouTube that is reviewing horror books, believe it or not, and also all kinds of different books. So I include that in my CV. Those were all things I started for free. I, was, I wanted to read more books and I'm reading them anyway. I may as well put them out there in some way. And it doesn't have to be a huge thing where you're trying to get lots of subscribers or lots of followers for your blog. It can totally just be for yourself. But to say that for X amount of years or months you have been sitting down and putting time and thought and energy into what these books are about or into the writing community, the reading community, it is a real help and if you feel like you don't have anything else you can definitely include that in your writing CV. Another thing you can do for free is to attend or even volunteer at book festivals, writing festivals, there are plenty of things going on at the minute uh, in Ireland. There is a fantastic couple of days going on in Carlo next weekend. Not next weekend, I think it's the 29th of October. There's some fantastic stuff going on in Carlo. If I can make it, uh, I definitely will be there. But if you go to these events, go to these festivals, if you can volunteer at them, that's even better and you can get so much background knowledge and you can get to meet so many other writers, published writers and literary agents and publishers and everything and just you can absorb so much information. I can't tell you how 
invaluable it is to attend these things and again you're it's showing that you're part of the community it's showing that you're putting yourself out there and as someone who struggles with a lot of uh anxiety and i absolutely had to really push myself to go to these things i'm not saying totally fling yourself out of your comfort zone but if you can if you can go to these things at all just say that you were there then they can be an asset for your writer's cv or thing that is 50 50 for a writer's cv um if you're querying a book you can also say that you have other finished works or finished pro projects or that you're working on something else now this can be helpful say in the fantasy genre where it's sort of normal it's part of the norm to have books in a series so if you're querying the first book and you can say hey i've i've already started on these other books that can be great sometimes depending on the genre or depending if if you're querying a horror book but you're you're saying that you're now starting a romance novel that can throw agents or publishers off a little bit because it seems like you're a little bit all over the place um, but if you have anything that is relevant to what you're working on or it, again if it's not querying a book but you're applying for arts funding or some sort of thing some sort of achievement or award or whatever then you should include anything that you have finished or anything that you're working on at the minute. So that is what a writer's CV is and what it isn't and what you should include. Now, what happens if, like me, when I started my writing journey, uh, you feel like you don't have anything to put on a writer's CV? You, you haven't done anything, you didn't study English in college or school or anything, you don't feel like you have anything. Don't panic. Like I did, I just made stuff, I didn't make stuff up, okay. I didn't make stuff up, but I started things for free that were able to get me in so many doors. My, the reason I had a an booked book Instagram is because one was sort of required uh, for the Young Writers Delegates because I had the book Instagram I decided to make the blog because I had the blog I thought why don't I make YouTube videos because I started making YouTube videos and only because I started making YouTube videos I now have a story published in this YouTube booktube anthology which just kind of blows my mind so all of these things can snowball all of these things can put you in contact with so many different people and there are things that you can do to start building a CV right now. The first and most important thing and hardest thing is to get writing. Write and finish as many things as you can whether it's poems or short stories, screenplays or full books and get querying, get applying for things, sign up for things, you should look in your area and see if there are any things that you can apply for, whether it's competitions, whether it's funding or bursaries, writing retreats, whether it's classes that you can go to and if if your personal finances mean that you can't pay for these expensive writing classes, there are a lot of places uh, and they're in the Irish Writer Centre as well where you can apply for sort of a discount on them depending on your circumstances which is always helpful. Volunteer at literary events. Go to Hodges Figgis and the Gutter Bookshop in Dublin. There are always book events, book launches there. Book launches always have published writers, their other published friends, their friends who are book agents, their friends who are publishers like there's so many different people there um so that's where i see a lot of people haven't worked up the courage to talk to many of them yet but they're there i know we're fine take creative writing classes we can all always improve our writing and it doesn't even have to be classes there are so many free resources on youtube 
uh, people giving out great advice on how to improve your writing but if you can sign up for any short creative writing class courses online that you can do or there can be seminars or events that you can go to particularly around um, cultural events and stuff in in Ireland you know there's always James Joyce or Oscar Wilde days or weekends where they're gonna have different classes or different reading events where you can go and you can read. Uh, there's one at the Irish Writer Centre called Taking the Mic where you can read part of your work there as well. Like I said you can start a blog, an Instagram, a TikTok now, YouTube. Also you can, why not join a writing group or start your own writing group. I have a fantastic writing group. Writing groups aren't always uh, the best thing for your writing but if you can find a good group of people that you can actually bounce off each other that is fantastic and if you can't find one in your area why not start one it can be in person it can be online it can be over discord why not it can be all these things and it's a way of and it's not only a way of helping you it's also a way of helping other people then as well and if you're in a particularly barren area for these kind of events, why not start your own book events, your own book club, your own writing events. You can start asking people to come and talk, asking different book people to come there and, and give advice. Why not do that? There's, there's so many possibilities. And again, all of these things that start out small can lead to other bigger things and all of these things start at small but they really do snowball into much bigger things and opportunities beget opportunities and, and anything related to writing is useful in that you can either include that specific thing in your writer's CV or it will get you one step closer to something else that you can. So. Writer CV is essential if you're querying any books or if you're applying for any kind of retreats or bursaries or funding or anything and it's not impossible to start one. You probably have a lot of things in the back of your head, a lot of things that you've you've been to or you've been a part of before and you just didn't think they were relevant but they could be so take another look at those things, write down a whole list of anything book related that you've ever done, any events or places you've been to and see what stands out to you, see what says to you this person is interested in writing, they want to learn more about writing and this is a step in the right direction. So that is my video on the writer's CV. If you have any questions or queries or if you have any advice, if you know more than I do I'm sure you probably do if you have any advice for any writers please leave them in the comments below I, I'm grateful for them myself never mind anyone else who reads them if you have any other suggestions for writerly videos that you want me to do or you want me to talk about or start a discussion on please let me know thank you so much for watching I shall be back very soon with another video and I shall see you then